Too cold, too cold, too cold. Hey guys, what's up? Fur Daddy here. Uh, I want to apologize first and foremost for my voice. I'm still a little bit sick, but it was important that I got this Eureka guide to you guys uh, as quickly as possible because I know you guys are going through the content. So please bear with me. If I'm a little short of breath, it's because I've been coughing up a storm. So uh, this is a second part of the Eureka guide that I put on my channel. If you want to know how to unlock Eureka or how to get some of that... Uh, beginner mechanics please check that video out first this has a lot to cover in this video so I'm not even gonna to touch on that I'm gonna start immediately in the Pagos zone so if you have any questions about the basics of Eureka please go and check out that video first and then come back here uh, once you get past the first zone of Eureka okay let's get into it all right guys welcome to Pagos Eureka Pagos is probably the most hated zone in Eureka it's hated by a lot of people this is because it has very unintuitive mechanics, a terrible map layout, and it is in general a lot more grindy compared to uh, both the earlier and later sections of Eureka. This is also where uh, a lot of people who have finished Eureka farm certain fates for rare items, and uh, let's just say the shout chat can get a little bit toxic at times uh, when people are trying to get those items because when those fates pop, uh, they are usually pulled pretty instantly, and uh, there's there's some negative atmosphere in Pagos, so it's a stopping point for a lot of people. I hope that this guide can help push you through there, and uh, we'll cover the rest of the zones in this video as well. So yeah, let's just get into it. Uh, upon completing your Animus weapon, which I laid out in my previous video, you can enter Pagos. Uh, you have to complete your weapon in Animus and in Pagos, to get the armor, so if you haven't completed your Animos weapon, do that. Uh, you can start to unlock the Aetherites in this area at level 21, tw uh, 23, and 25. So I suggest you at least get to level 21 in Animos. Uh, it is notorious, again, for being really terrible to navigate. And there are a lot of really weird locations that you can only really get with uh, Aetherites easily. So, uh, yeah. To progress your weapon in this zone, you need to be level 25, even though you unlock the zone at 18. That's why a lot of people elect to stay in Animos until approaching level 25. Uh, whether you want to stay in Animos for a little while longer or come to Pagos is up to you. Uh, I find that Pagos is more active, so I went there to level up, but uh, again, it's up to you. So the reason why people wait to be level 25 is because upon reaching level 25 and completing the quest, you unlock something called the Kettle. Uh, this Kettle allows you to fill a gauge with Light Aether upon killing notorious monsters, which you have to turn into Frosted Protean Crystals at the Crystal Forge down the cliff sneaking past the dragons okay that's that's a lot so i'm just going to show you the process of doing that and explain it in game so you can understand it a little better all right so here we are in pagos uh you can see on the top right here i have my vitiated aether crystal yield and that fills up uh when i kill notorious monsters it goes to nine and you're gonna want to get it to nine uh because you effectively get a bonus um a bonus crystal because if I were to turn this in right now I would lose this little bit of crystal here I, I don't care uh, because I've already done my weapon so I'll show you guys how to do it now um, yeah so you want to go to geothermal studies I'll pull up my map here now this is terrible uh, this is just a small example of why people hate Eureka Pagos so much uh, but yeah so this is quite difficult to do before reaching the level cap in this area. Uh, mostly because these guys will aggro on you. They still aggro on you at max level, but you can kill them a lot easier. Sometimes it's worth it to just kill one of them. So, alright, let's uh... I'm showing you all this, it's, it's very important that I show you this because this is unintuitive. So you have to uh, get to this little bit of this cliff here and then start 
walk in just so you don't fall off. Let's sneak down. Now you'll see right here, this is one of the mechanics of Pagos. So I really hope that people didn't skip past this part of the video. This is a frozen void dragon. Now these guys have something called a sound aggro. What that means is you will aggro them if you trigger your sound in the area. So uh, let's just go ahead and put on our walk. Now if you're a summoner, you need to dispel your summon as well. That's why you never really see any summoners in Eureka. So if we put on our walk, we can just tiptoe past this guy here. Just be really quiet. Alright, and that should be good. And that allows us to get to the Crystal Forge here. Alright, that is how you get your frosted protein crystals, which are an essential component to upgrading your weapon, which I'll touch on now. Alright, I got some emergency, so I should be better for this part of the video a little bit. Um, so let's talk about the weapon, and then I'll touch on uh, a few of the other difficult to reach areas in uh, Pagos before moving on to Pyros. So, the weapon is going to require 500 Pagos Crystals, which you get from killing the Notorious Monsters, uh, 31 Frosted Protean Crystals, so 3 and a bit of the, uh, the kettle being refilled, and 5 uh, items that you can get from the, the Birdwatcher, like I touched on in my previous video, or from the Louis on Ice uh, Fate. So you can trade in the Pagos Crystals if you have extra ones. You will probably have a bunch of extra Pagos Crystals by the time you uh, get the Frosted Protean Crystals. So, yeah. Uh, I do want to say, like, there is another way you can fill up your kettle. If you get a small party together, I didn't do this at all, but it is possible. If you get a small party together, you can basically, like, kill high-level enemies like the Morbles that spawn Cassie. And uh, I'll, I'll put those on screen now. Uh, those enemies there to spawn in uh, Kettle Light as well, if, if you don't feel like doing the uh, Notorious Monsters. But the, the, the Notorious Monsters is going to be the best way to do it. So, yeah. Um, let me touch on a few of the difficult to reach areas, because you're going to need to know that for Pagos. So, the first spot is where you have to drop down to get to the Brothers Fate, which spawns here in the Bull's Pen. Uh, you might think that you have to drop down here, right by the western edge, but you actually just drop down right here in the middle. Make sure you walk so you don't go off the edge. The area over here is a dead end. Uh, I don't know why they did that, it's just cruel. So this is where you go through to get to the bull's pen. That's a mistake a lot of people make, so again, right here is where you want to drop down to get to the brother's fate. On to the next area. So on the eastern edge here, we have two places that you can drop down. We have the place that you want to drop down to get to uh, the I, uh, Agra, uh, I'll put the name up here, uh, to get to the grassy area that you fight that fate in, as well as Horus. And that's just down this area here where this frozen dragon is, where these guys are dropping down. Right there. And you want to make sure you walk, or else you will gain the ire of that fr I wonder if anybody here is going to do it. Okay, they're fine. And then the area over here is where you go to drop down for Louis. You drop down on this side to get to Louis on ice. This one's a little more straightforward. There's no bait uh, in this one here. So drop down on this one to get to Louis on ice. Again, you want to make sure that you're walking when you drop down these because there's a dragon on the bottom of both of those. So with that in mind, that's basically everything you need to know about Eureka Pagos. And we can leave this hellhole and get to Pyros. Okay guys, welcome to Pyros. This is uh, immediately a way better zone than Pagos, so you guys are really in for a treat. Uh, in my opinion, from here on out, it's it's pretty easy, so uh, that's good. So just to go over the basics of this zone, we're going to speed things up a little bit, because you should understand Eureka pretty well by now. You can unlock the Aetherites that I'm showing here, the Dragon Star Observatory, which is the South Aetherite at level 37, the Firing Chamber, which is the Center Aetherite at level 39, and the Carbonite Quarry uh, at level 41. 
So this zone does away with the kettle, at least for now, and replaces that with a brand new mechanic, which is Logos actions. Uh, these actions are gained just by like killing enemies in the area, or by opening the bunny chest, which I'll briefly touch on in a minute. Uh, or by purchasing them off the market board. Now I bought a lot of mine off the market board just to get the armor really fast. Uh, but yeah, so I'm gonna touch on those in a little bit uh, as far as unlocking the armor once I go over some more basics of the zone. So if you've done anything like Boja or Zadnor, the Logos actions work a lot like the Lost actions do there. There are a few major differences, being that you can only have a few slotted at once and they don't persist through like leaving and coming back to the zone. So they're a lot more temperamental. Other than that, they're pretty much exactly the same. So yeah, the quest line in this area, in addition to the level quest line that's done by Kryle, is also done by this guy, Drake. And uh, Drake gives you quests based on how many logograms you've unlocked. So the basic process is you speak to Drake, you decrypt the uh, the logogram, and then you can use the logos manipulator to actually craft the different logos actions. Uh, you can ignore the umbral and astral array for right now because that's later on. Uh, but for now, you can put the different uh, things that you have there in to create the lost actions. So I'm gonna to jump to the browser here and show you the website that I use to help you uh, unlock certain content. All right, so I've linked this website in the description. This is the Eureka Tracker website. But what it basically allows you to do is put in the different uh, logograms, the min whatever me memes, the memes that you've gotten, and it lets you craft, uh, tell you which ones you can craft out of them. So you only need one of each one to unlock it, and you can just like get rid of it or trash it afterwards if you want. Uh, but yeah, you're going to need to unlock 50 in order to get the armor. So uh, the cheapest things you can buy are the fundamental and conceptual, but expect this to set you back a couple hundred K if you just buy all of them. You are also welcome to just progress through the zone, and then if you get to the end of the zone and you don't have 50 yet, uh, you can go and buy them on the market board, or you can just buy them on the market board and get the armor, and then you're laughing for the zone. So uh, for the time being, what you're going to want to do is, at, at your convenience, uh, go to this website and unlock these actions. They can also help you out. Uh, you can see what each one does and which one you want to use in particular tailors to whatever playstyle you have and what class you play but you're gonna need some of these later for the Baldesian Arsenal, which I will touch on. Uh, but for the time being, just unlock the actions themselves, and that's how you get the armor. So once you actually get the 50 logograms, uh, you'll have a quest unlock, and you'll be able to go to the Expedition Artisan here and just buy the non-glowing version of the gear. So, so there it is. You've unlocked the first piece of the glamour, which is great. And it's actually pretty cheap, the Pyrus Crystals required. From here on out, you can totally ditch your weapon. You don't need to upgrade your weapon at all from here on out. Just uh, do the logograms and that'll get you to your glowing stuff. So if you do want to upgrade your weapon, uh, you can do that. And I'll go over the requirements you need to upgrade your weapon right now. So to upgrade your weapon, you're going to need a total of 650 Pyrus Crystals, I know. Uh, five Penthesilia Flames, which you get by completing the Penny Fate when it spawns in. Uh, or by doing the Pyro's Crystals uh, and with the Bird Watcher. So I, I unlocked this, like I came back and did it afterwards after I got my glowy armor, but uh, yeah, you're free to do this whenever you want and again, it doesn't impede your progress. So the, the progression through this zone is really just leveling up, uh, getting that first set of armor, which you will need to get your augmented armor that glows, as well as uh, just, yeah. I'm going to briefly touch on the fate in the area, the bunny fate in the area, which is uh, a great way to make money and another way to unlock some of the mounts. So similarly uh, to the previous zones, there is a bunny fate, which basically means you uh, save a bunny and then it leads you to treasure. Uh, this one is a little unique because you can get the elder mount, which retails for, depending on your data center, like 6 to 10 mil. So you can make a lot of money with it, and you'll usually see people camping the area. You don't really have time to get there when it pops. You have to be standing there already uh, when it pops because people will just clear it right away. So, uh, But if, if you guys want to, I'm showing the footage of me doing this uh, right here. There's also one in Hydatos, but that's how you get the elder mount in uh, Eureka Pyros. Okay, so that relatively short segment is Pyros. Uh, it's all, all in all a way easier grind than the other zones. Uh, I personally really like it uh, compared to 
Pagos especially, and we're moving on to the best and easiest and most straightforward zone after this, Eureka Hydados. Uh, if you're ready to go, let's go. So again, you don't need to complete your weapon, just get to the level required, the level 50, uh, and you can go to that zone pretty much right away. You may want to level up more in this area and get more sets of armor and stuff like that, which is really good because uh, you won't be getting crystals at a very high amount at all once we get to high datos. So get your armor, get everything you need, and I will see you there. All right, so here we are at the end of Eureka. Most of this zone is the Baldesian Arsenal, which I will talk about in this video. So uh, let's get started first with getting the glowing armor. To unlock the glowing armor, you just need to collect 190 high datos crystals. Uh, the issue with doing this is that you get way less crystals in this area, and also the echo isn't here anymore. But that's made up for by how easy the map is to navigate, and how generally focused most instants are, with trains being by far the most common in this instance. Once you've obtained the 190 high datos crystals, you just need to talk to this guy here, and you can purchase the armor. And if you were just in it for the armor, then congrats, that's all you need and you're done. Uh, but next I'm going to talk about how to get the crystals a little bit faster, the bunny fate in the area, and finally the Baldesian Arsenal, or how to get the ball mount. Uh, most fates in this area only give 5 to 9 crystals. There are two fates which give you more. Uh, the fate required to unlock the weapon in this area, called PW or Peace Warden, gives you 10 crystals, and the fate that unlocks the Baldesian Arsenal also gives you 10. Uh, there's also a third fate that gives you 30, and that's a special fate which spawns 30 minutes into the Baldesian Arsenal starting. And yeah, that gives you 30 crystals. You can coordinate with the people that are running the Baldesian Arsenal, if there's somebody doing that in your instance, to be available for the support fate. And you don't need to be doing the raid to be able to participate in any of those. The bunny fate in the area is similar to every other one. It gets dropped pretty much instantly, but the difference with this one is that it gives you special items very commonly that are super useful for running the Baldesian Arsenal. They give you Aethertite flasks, uh, which can be exchanged at the Expedition Alchemist after unlocking the Baldesian Arsenal to give you extra slots for your Logos actions. And that's it. With all that information covered, you can proceed through this area, unlock the Baldesian Arsenal by completing Kryle's quests, and proceed to organizing with the Baldesian Arsenal crew. So I usually like to keep my guides uh, self-contained and I don't want to rely too much on outside resources, especially because a lot of them are really convoluted and don't actually help that much. Uh, but in the case of the Baldesian Arsenal Discord, it is mandatory to have an easy experience with the Baldesian Arsenal, as well as mandatory to not ruin the experience of other people that are trying to do the raid. The gist of the Discord is that, at least for Ether, because I understand that it's a little bit different on each data center, uh, you join the Discord link that I have in the description. From there, you're able to queue or sign up for future Baldesian Arsenal runs. There's a bot in the Aether Discord that's created by the owner of the Discord server, which allows you to enroll as a DPS, tank, or healer. Once the run commences, you're automatically DM'd by the bot and given a zone and Discord channel to join. You don't have to speak in any of these, and there's a leader for each group which will help you with any questions that you have. Having done this experience myself, I can only say this is an incredible testament to the dedication and perseverance of the Final Fantasy XIV community uh, to come together and to overcome content like this, and I highly recommend it. Uh, even if you're a little nervous, it, they walk you through everything, and it's, it's really nice. Uh, everybody in the Discord who was talking was incredibly nice and polite and handled every question that I had. Uh, they didn't know I did YouTube or anything when I was in there, it was just a regular person, and everybody was very, very nice to me in the Discord. So, if you're watching this and you're from that Discord, uh, thank you for making that experience great, and if you haven't done it yet, uh, I'm sure you will have a good experience in that Discord. Before each boss, uh, somebody who is selected beforehand calls the fight. That means they tell you exactly what to do and when, and it is very, very newcomer friendly. There's specific runs that are marked for newcomer friendly as well. Uh, there are also guides to understanding the mechanics of both the Discord and the Baldesian Arsenal there. So uh, I'll direct you to that Discord in the description for completion of the raid, as they are the most well-equipped to help you out. I don't know how it works on Primal or Crystal or anything like that, uh, but from what I understand it's a pretty similar process, at least in Crystal. So hopefully uh, you have that experience. If not, uh, I'm sorry, but there's not much I can, I'm really able to do because I only know it from a first-hand experience playing on Aether. Uh, but that is how you unlock the Baldesian Arsenal, and upon completion of the Baldesian Arsenal, as long as you're still alive by the end, you get the Demi-Ozma mount as an achievement. 
So uh, you don't need to roll for it or anything like that. You get them out automatically and you have it. So with that in mind, you've completed Eureka. You have all of the, uh, you have all the items, you have everything there. Uh, the only thing that's left is the weapon, and I'll touch briefly on that now. So assuming your weapon is completed uh, in the previous zone, all you need here is f uh, 350 Hydatos Crystals and 5 Scales, which you get from killing Peace Warden twice. Um, however, if you want the full version, which doesn't look any different, but has elemental power, which improves your ability in Eureka, uh, you can collect 100 Eureka Fragments from doing the Baldesian Arsenal. So that is mandatory if you want to upgrade your weapon past plus one. But again, the plus one to plus two doesn't give you uh, any sort of stat bonuses except for an elemental bonus, which is only useful in Eureka for completing additional sets of armor and stuff like that. So it is definitely worth it if you want to do uh, complete multiple sets of armor to do this com completely and then go back and, and level through the other zones. Um, but yeah, so with that in mind, that's everything done. All right, so now we're on the outro of the video. I just want to thank you guys so much for the support uh, on the first part of this video and for this video as well. Uh, I know Eureka isn't exactly relevant content, but I want to create stuff for you guys. While everybody else is making like Endwalker speculation videos, I thought it would be useful for you guys to actually have something to do while you're waiting for Endwalker instead of just watching everybody like and just waiting around for it to happen. So hopefully this was useful for you guys. This is a great time to do it, and I really recommend that you guys go through and do uh, do Eureka. It's, it's a lot of fun. I've had a great experience there. I'm looking for more reasons just to stick around in Eureka because I've had so much fun with it. And it's very friendly towards just going in by yourself. Like you don't need to go in with a whole bunch of people or you don't, you don't need to coordinate it. It's, it's, there's people in there that you can coordinate with. You can meet friends that way and new people. By the time I left Eureka, um, I had several people that knew me, like not even from YouTube or anything, but just knew me from being in Eureka because there's not a lot of people doing it. So it's, it's a really fun bit of content and I highly suggest that you, uh, that you guys check it out and enjoy it. If, if you did, leave a comment down below and if you didn't, still leave a comment. Uh, you can join my Discord in the description and that's it. This is it for Eureka. Uh, if you guys have a suggestion for the next guide that I should complete, post it in the description and I'll work on that next. Uh, I really wanted to put this guide out, like not wait a full week so that you guys could have it uh, like early even though I was a little bit sick. So apologies for that again, but yeah, uh, I just want to show you guys I'm dedicated <laughs> to, to making your guys' experience in Final Fantasy a good one. Uh, thanks for all the support on my videos, and I'll see you guys later.